So uh, if you just sit here, yeah. I'm gonna ask you uh, some questions about uh, identity, and uh, yeah, okay. it's gonna be a, a little bit personal questions, but also no. more as no, no, in your it's thoughts uh, on uh, no problem. I'll okay. try to answer. <laughs> yes, yes, that's great. Jeg har snakket med medlemmer af verdens ældste proletariat. Deres bevidsthed var både sande og falske. Det hele kommer til at give mening til sidst. Would you say you feel Dutch? I feel partly Dutch, because I am partly Dutch. Uh, my other half of my family come from Spain, and I feel connected to that country also very much. I speak the language very good, and I love the culture more there than um, than here, actually. Mm. Yeah. But okay. I live here, so I feel also Dutch, yes. So, do you feel proletarian? Proletariatet er det kæmpemæssige flertal af befolkningen, som ikke ejer arbejdspladser. Den del af befolkningen, som der fordi de ikke ejer arbejdspladser, bliver nødt til at sælge deres arbejdskraft til nogen, som gør når du tænker på proletariatet, kan du også bare tænke på arbejderklassen. Men når du tænker på arbejderklassen, tænker du nok på ham her. Det behøver du ikke. Du kan også bare tænke på dig selv. Er du ikke også en del af den del af befolkningen, som ikke ejer arbejdspladser? Bliver du ikke også med jævne mellemrum nødt til at sælge din arbejdskraft til nogen, som ejer arbejdspladser, for at du kan leve? Så so vil du say at du føler, like You're uh, a part of the working class. Yes, for sure. I really feel like I'm part of the working class, yes. Okay. Because uh, what I say, it's really in my routine. Sometimes I feel like I work more than I have free time. Yeah. yeah. I go every day to the office in Amsterdam. I travel from my house to there. So it's really like routine to get my alarm, get up, make myself ready for work, and then I go really to the office uh, four or five days in the week. Okay. Being Dutch affects my life in more ways, in different ways. I think the culture here is really rushed. Sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be really bad. I don't know how it is in your country, but uh, here we have a lot of burnout in the moment. Young people who suffer from burnout Um, because uh, the expectations here in Holland are really high. So you have to work five days. Preferable also do like a private school or study, homeschooling, you know, like the, the lot, it's high, the expectations, it's high. And um, yeah. So what do you feel is more important for your life? Yeah. Being Dutch, being part of the working class. I think it's a really difficult question. What you ask now, what is more important for me? Or being Dutch, or being part of the working life. Uh, sometimes it seems like the government looks more to the people outside the country than inside. What do you mean by that? that sometimes it looks that the government take first care of the people outside so the immigrants who come here and not the dutch children who cannot celebrate their birthdays because there's no money in the house sen falsk bevidsthed men proletaren på en gåelig vis bliver mødt af de negative konsekvenser ved kapitalismen om det er han frygter fremtiden eller hun frygter klimakrisen, eller han frygter krigen, eller hun mister sit arbejde, eller de mister deres hjem. Her præsenterer sin skillevej. Den falske bevidsthed vil fortælle arbejderen, at årsagen til arbejderens problemer er andre arbejdere. Om det så er ham selv, eller muslimerne, eller jøderne. Den sande bevidsthed derimod er en klassebevidsthed. Den fortæller arbejderen, at årsagen til arbejderens problemer 
er kapitalismen selv. Den sande bevidsthed har givet os weekenden, sommerferien. Den falske bevidsthed har givet os Dansk Folkeparti, Hitler og Holocaust. I intet land i verden har den falske bevidsthed haft samme konsekvenser som i Tyskland. I grew up in well I was born in 1980 so I grew up in the 80s and the 90s to grandparents who were socialized in the 1930s or well the 19 late 1920s 1930s Germany so as a as a um as a boy growing up with especially one grandfather who lived through this time and who believed in that time and who served in the war and <coughs> flew in a plane they could have done something completely different. They could have said, okay, so this country is responsible, or in their view, for two world wars. We can divide this country permanently. There should never be a strong Germany in the center of Europe. And that was actually a German political position um, after the war as well. There were a lot of Germans who felt Germany should never again be a powerful player in Europe. There's a German word called Demut, and in English that would, um, Well, it's humility. I feel like even today, Germans could be a little bit more humble about um, who we are, about where we came from. And then parallel to that, I grew up in an educational system in Germany where, yes, we learned about facts, but um, I feel like as an adult now that much of the history that, um, that impacts us even today Um, was not worked through the way that it should have. So yeah, I think we have a very different relationship to national identity um, than many other people do, in Europe especially. Um, and I grew up with that very much. And, um, and I think I was lucky because we moved around quite a lot when I was younger, that I experienced others, other people's reactions to the fact that I'm German. So I would argue that class is, for most people in their daily lives, a lot more relevant than a national border. So how would you compare like, the life of an ordinary Spanish person to the life of an ordinary Dutch person? Just your best guess. Yeah, I think if I will compare the lives of an ordinary Spanish and an ordinary Dutch person, I think the costs in Holland, if you look financial, are more higher. Um, but also the salaries are higher. Um, I know in Spain the salaries are very low, uh, or not very low, but lower. But also the rental prices of the houses are lower. And if you want to buy a house, it's also cheaper, the price. So I think you, you play kit. In, in the financial parts. Um, everywhere the prices are going up in, in Europe, in all Europe. And Would you say the difference between average people in Holland mm -hmm. and rich people in Holland mm -hmm. is greater than in them average people in Holland and average people in Spain? So oh, I thought like, you mean the poor people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the difference between the rich people in Holland and the average people in Holland is this bigger than the difference between the average people in Holland and the average people in Spain. I think between the rich people in Holland and the average people in Holland is the difference bigger than between the average people in Holland and the average people in Spain. Sorry, I had to see it. Yeah. <laughs> they say, but I don't know really about this, if this is in really true, but they say that if you are in Holland, the rich get only richer, 
and the poor get the poor get only more poor. Do you think yeah. there's a big difference between average people in Belgium and rich people in Belgium? Yes, I think so. Well, people who have who are rich who have uh, <clears throat> their own company or their, their own uh, yes. So uh, there's still a an important division huh, between uh, people, the, the lower range of society and the higher range you know, of society. We have, luckily, we have a good, good social, <coughs> sorry, a good social uh, system that uh, makes uh, differences less, uh, less high, but still uh, there is a great difference between lower and higher in society, certainly. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why that is? So, we're living in a capitalist society, so uh, <clears throat> I think that it explains uh, very much. So, so it's a, a very you know, society that is focused on material uh, wealth. Still, uh, you know, for me, that's the basic uh, explanation for. Uh, for this uh, division and for this focus on material uh, wealth. Okay. So, how do you think, and if you have a capitalist society, what is the alternative? Is there something else? Oh, maybe uh, <laughs> in the past I also had an illusion about <laughs> socialist system, but. Uh, <laughs> No longer, if we see the, the, the examples of the Soviet Union and all the Eastern Europe and China, Korea, Cuba, these are certainly not examples to follow, I think. So, uh, in fact, uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, it's hard uh, to, to, to say if there is an alternative for this capitali capitalist uh, society. I, at this moment, I would say I have no answer. <laughs> So do you think that a uh, capitalist society will just continue forever until humanity yeah. goes under? Forever, I, I, I would say I hope not, but uh, <laughs> being re realist, I think. I, at my age, I will n never <laughs> see any different <laughs> system, I think. No, I have no illusion about that. Tænk mig, at være sjovt at finde for præcis samme sted her igen. Hvad er sådan et liv? Ja, har du filmet det nu? Ja, ja. Jeg hedder Henrik Salmen Blackman. Jeg har skabt den her film. Alligevel vil jeg gerne sige tak til Dyke og Astrid Selma, og til Leila og Mark og Ida og Anush og Jesper, som der alligevel har hjulpet til at lave den her film på forskellige måder. Sidst vil jeg bare minde jer om, at verdenshistorien aldrig er tilgivet i jorden.